Whether we like it or not, a few women are considered to be extremely high value to awesome and intelligent men, but not for the reasons you might think. Contrary to popular belief, it's not their body, it's not their looks, it's not their age. Sure, that helps, but if those were the missing links, there wouldn't be so many gorgeous women struggling to be highly valued. After helping hundreds of women around the world who weren't getting the attraction, the attention, the desire, or the respect they wanted from men to finally get it, I want to share the five biggest differences that can help you to be highly valued and respected by great men, even if this has never happened before. Before we start, let me address part of the problem head on. There's going to be a significant number of guys out there who don't have the emotional maturity or the kindness or the discipline to value you and other women highly. That is definitely part of the problem and I don't want to put it under the rug. However, it's not the totality of the problem. Why? Because there's going to be women out there who are not supermodels, who are getting proposed to, who are getting married to awesome men every single day. And my goal is to help you see those differences between women who, despite not being the most gifted DNA-wise, have awesome men showing up in their lives. And, and if you're not, what are the shifts you can make right now that can get you to close that gap? The first difference I found between women who are valued incredibly highly by men and those who don't is that they have a subconscious stance that says something along the lines of self-love is an active verb when it matters most. Here's what I mean by that. Self-love means many different things. When you wake up in the morning and you exercise, that's self-love. When you meditate, that's self-love. When you connect with friends who are kind to you, that's self-love. However, there's going to be things in life that are harder to step into that are also an expression of self-love. For example, you connect with someone who has a high degree of charisma. There's a lot of chemistry, but there's something off about him. He is not treating you with the respect that you want. He's not being clear in what he's looking for. He's being hot and cold with you. He's breadcrumbing in some way. He's disrespectful or punching ways that hurt you. To have the capacity to when stakes are high, when your heart is being flooded with emotions, when you're feeling really connected to someone to say, I choose me versus this experience. I choose self-love as an active verb when you can do that. When you can walk away from a situation that your mind is telling you, but he might be the answer to your prayers and he really isn't. And you can take a step back and have the discipline of saying, I want something better. I want something that's more respectful. I want something that's kinder. So that essence, that stance of self-love is paramount in your life. It's one of the biggest differences I found between women who get everything they want for men and women who struggle to get respect and get high value. Number two is the principle of I'm in constant attunement with my emotions. Here's what that means. That means that you develop the emotional literacy to understand and grasp the totality of what's happening in your life. It's very, very hard to set boundaries. It's hard to say no. It's hard to understand what's really happening with a man when you are confused about what you're feeling. If you have an expression that goes into the, I feel good and bad and I feel happy and sad, there's nothing wrong with that. It's better than not knowing but it lacks nuance and it lacks sophistication. There's going to be dozens of emotions you could be experiencing at any moment in time. And to figure out what emotions, because if you feel humiliated or if you feel disrespected, you're going to do something different than if you feel weird or off about someone. Weird or off, not specific enough, humiliated. There might be a specific action you need to take as a result of telling yourself the truth. Now, certain times you might have multiple emotions going on, but taking the space and time to sit in with what you're feeling, discovering for yourself and telling yourself the actual word that resonates with the vibration of that emotion is going to give you a lot of power into being able to say what you want and set boundaries, which is something we're going to talk about later on today. The third difference is women who are valued more highly have an embodiment of my body is a priceless gift. And, and here's what I mean by that. On the spectrum of connecting with a man, going from early connection to eventually having sex with them, there's going to be a whole array of experiences that have to do with physical touch. When you consider your body to be a priceless gift, that means 
that you know that the more you connect with someone physically, the more likely you are to feel attached to them and their energy. So what does that mean? That means if you connect with somebody touchy-feely wise really quickly and he's a bad guy for you, he has toxic energy, he is disrespectful or even abusive, you may not catch it. You might still feel connected to him and that might make it really hard for you to A, recognize that he's not good for you or that he's horrible for you or once you recognize it to actually detach from him. So what you want to do is you want to haze yourself and take longer to connect physically. You want to take some time to get to know someone. And when you feel like things are going faster than you need to, to voice it out, to express it. And if the guy doesn't like it, to have the, again, self-love expression of saying, I need to walk away from the situation until I get something that feels in alignment with my values. Now, before I go into my last two points, which are some of the best ones that I'm gonna share today, if you're a single woman watching this, I'll be willing to bet that you're not fully aware of the root cause why you're still single. So what I've done is I've taken 13 years of helping women find love in multiple continents, all kinds of love challenges you can imagine, and put this together in a very simple quiz you can take in about 60 seconds that will reveal to you the number one reason you're still seeing. If you want to participate, all you have to do is go to the first thing in the description. You will see a page that looks like this. Answer a few simple questions. And in 60 seconds or so, you'll have two things. Answer the question where you're still single and a report that's going to share with you based on your specific blind spot, what is the number one thing you can do starting today to reverse this trend you're on and attract the guy you want in a fraction of the time. Here's the fourth difference in women who are valued more highly by men. They ask the tough questions early. What does that mean? That means that you understand that you have something inherently valuable to offer. You understand you don't want to waste your time, but you also don't want to waste a guy's time. So when you ask tough questions early, you run the risk of a guy thinking you're too intense. You run the risk of a guy saying, I'm scared because you're asking a tough question. But guess what? You also run the privilege of understanding that someone may not be a fit for you. You want to figure out if the guy that you're choosing to invest your time and energy on has a similar vision to what you want, has a different definition of the law and intimacy, is looking for a timeline that's similar to yours, has shared ideas and values regarding all sorts of topics, including money. So when you take the time to earlier versus later ask up questions, here's what happens. You can avoid so many of the guys that would have taken you weeks or months to decipher through in a short amount of time, while at the same time, the guys who are of the fit that you're looking for can recognize that you're someone who is willing to invest on the right person and will lift you up in their book to, to be someone that they want to invest time and energy on because they also have valuable things to do. They also don't want to waste their time. A litmus test when you ask a question to a guy, if he answers in a, in a disrespectful way, is that he may not be ready for that level of intimacy that you're seeking. And it's okay. You're not leaving gold on the table. You can move away and somebody else will show up for you. The fifth difference is the embodiment of I am clear about my boundaries. That means that you understand that you have needs and that if somebody is acting in ways that go against your needs, that you need to be vocal about it. You're not saying to the guy that he is wrong. You're saying it, I need this different from the way you're doing this. For me to open up at this level, here's what I'm looking for. For me to go on a date with you, here's what I'm looking for. For me to connect with you and kiss you, here's what I'm looking for. So again, it's not about making anyone wrong. It's about saying, here's the things I need to go forward. Or here's the things that don't work for me. Or here's the things that used to work for me that no longer work for me. When you are clear about your boundaries, again, guys who are of the, I just want to connect with you physically and run away, will be highly discouraged from continuing. Guys who are looking for someone to be an intimate partner for life will feel encouraged by the fact that now they understand what they need to do to connect to your heart, to honor you, to respect you. And, and trust me, we men want to do good by women. If you tell us what you need and it's in our heart to do it, we will do it and we will get better at it. So be clear, be expressive about your boundaries. That doesn't mean he doesn't have boundaries, but it means that you both need to be expressive about what you need so you can get what you want. I'll throw in a bonus one. And that bonus one is women who get highly valued by men don't settle for less than intimacy and have a very inviting way of bringing about that. That means you know that you're looking for an intimate connection emotionally, 
physically, spiritually. And when you connect with a guy, you have that vision of what it is that you want. You won't settle for less than that, but you're inviting a guy to step up. You're inviting a guy to be more open. You're inviting a guy to be more connected. You're inviting a guy to be more expressive. When he finds the right meaning, even though it's challenging, even though it's scary, even though he may not have been fully practiced in the art of being vulnerable, he might step up to the plate. Hope this is helpful and useful and insightful. If it is, it would mean the world to me and to my channel because this is how this channel grows and reaches more of you to click like and subscribe. And if you want to continue learning how you can attract the guy you want without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, tricks, or stupid techniques, make sure to go to the next video right here.